In this video we'll look at partial fraction decomposition again but with the specific case of when we have quadratic factors that can't be reduced. So we now know what to do with denominators in rational, fraction, rational functions when they can be factored into distinct linear factors, repeated linear factors or some combination of that. When we've got a quadratic that has no real roots we can't write it as the product of real linear factors. So if this occurs in our rational function what can we do with that? Well basically we still follow the same steps with the exception of taking into account this little red part. All the linear factors we still deal with in exactly the same way but when we have one of these quadratic factors that we can't factorize into linear factors then we need to do it in a slightly different way. It's not much different though. All we do is put in a term that has on top of it an undetermined constant multiplied by the variable plus another constant. So instead of having something like a over x, we're going to have something like ax plus b over x squared plus 4. x squared plus 4 being an example of an irreducible quadratic in terms of real numbers. Everything else though in the partial fraction decomposition works exactly the same way as we've seen already. So let's see it by example. Let's try to decompose x plus 1 over x cubed plus 4x. The first thing I'm going to do is note that x cubed plus 4x factors into x outside of x squared plus 4. And you notice we've now got a quadratic x squared plus 4, but we can't reduce that into linear factors because x squared plus 4 only has complex valued roots. So we're going to have to leave it like that. So that means for our partial fraction decomposition, we're going to have to say x plus 1 over x cubed plus 4x will be equal to, well x is still a linear factor, so we have a over x, but then our quadratic factor needs a term on top of it like bx plus c. Essentially it's a linear function, and that's going to be over x squared plus 4. And now we proceed just like normal. So the first thing we do is combine the right hand side back again over a common denominator, x times x squared plus 4. And we get something like this, a by x squared plus 4 and then x by bx plus c all over the common denominator. And of course we know that if we expand this out we'll get exactly the same as the denominator on the left. So we're left with the equation x plus 1 must be equal to ax squared plus 4a plus bx squared plus cx. And we want to pick a, b and c to make that true. So we go ahead and equate the coefficients of powers of x. So for x squared, x to the 1 and x to the 0, or in other words the constant terms, we get x squared on the left we have none, and on the right we have a plus b of them. x to the 1, on the left we have one of those, and on the right we have c times x, so c, and then the constant term x to the 0 we have 1 on the left and 4a on the right. So two of those we've got already, we already know c is equal to 1 from the second equation, a must be equal to a quarter from the third equation, and that then tells us that b must be equal to minus 1 quarter. So we can put those all back together again into our partial fraction decomposition and we can finish this one off. So we have the assumed form a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 4 and now we're just going to replace the a and the b and the c with what we've just found. So c was of course 1, x times b, b is minus a quarter and our a was 1 quarter. Now let's just write that as 1 over 4x. That's our quarter. So there we've got our partial fraction decomposition. So just like we've done with the others, we can now use this to carry out the integration of the rational function that we couldn't integrate normally, but using its partial fraction decomposition. So we can write the integral of x plus 1 over x cubed plus 4x dx is equal to the integral of the partial fraction decomposition, 1 on 4x, and then plus minus a quarter x plus 1 all over x squared plus 4 dx 
Now note, I still don't know a rule for this one, so what I'm going to do is split that into two pieces. I do know this one here, that's going to be a quarter of log x. And then I've got plus the integral of, well, let's call that minus the integral, 1 on 4, x over x squared plus 4, dx, and then plus the integral of 1 on x squared plus 4, dx. Now, the first of these integrals, I'm going to make a slight change there. What I'm going to do is multiply the top here by 2, so that I've got 2x on the top, which is the derivative of the bottom. If we have the derivative of the derivative over the function, we can just say it's the log of the function on the bottom. But to account for that 2, I'm going to have to put another 2 out here. So I've multiplied by 2 and divided by 2. This little one here, I'm only actually going to give you the result for that one. Usually you could read that off a table up until when you learn about integration by trig substitution, which we won't be doing here. So, to finish it all off, we've got 1 on 4 times log x. Take away, now it's 1 on 8, times the log of the bottom, x squared plus 4. And the final one, which I'll give you, which you could read off a table though, is going to be a half of 10 inverse of x on 2. And don't forget the plus c at the end. Okay, so that's it for partial fraction decomposition, and that's actually it for our integrals. Uh, so maybe check out some texts and look at some questions or just some of the examples you see on integration by partial fractions. You can do basically all of those now. And that's it for our integration topic.